Kit Carson and the Grizzly Bears by Becky Henry Illustrated by Preston Gravely, Jr. In the days when the West was wild and untamed, brave men journeyed far to explore this vast wilderness. Kit Carson was one of these brave men. He traveled across the United States, blazing trails, trapping for furs, and fighting Indians. This true story tells of one adventure Kit Carson had in the Wild West. Men, we need meat, and we need it soon. With no rain in so long, all the animals have gone, looking for a better place to graze. I can't say that I blame them either. The leader of the camp scratched his head and looked around. Any of you men want to try to catch us some meat? I think I can. The voice belonged to Kit Carson, the 24-year-old crack shot. That's the way, Kit. The other man slapped his back and shook his hand. If anyone can do it, you can. Kit hoisted his rifle to his shoulder. I'm heading out on foot, and I aim to come back with some supper meat. Kit Carson was one man who usually did what he said he would do. In his soft moccasins, he padded noiselessly through the underbrush for almost a mile. Then his keen eyes spotted a clear imprint in the sand. Elk, he whispered, running his fingers over the delicate grooves. And these tracks are pretty fresh. They can't be too far away. Sure enough, as Kit followed the tracks through the trees, he soon came upon a whole herd of elk grazing on the few plants they could find. Only a mile away from camp, Kit chuckled, and those men thought there weren't any animals anywhere near here. Well, I'll be bringing supper home pretty soon. With a snap and a crack of his trusty rifle, Kit brought one big elk down to the ground. He headed toward it with a satisfied smile on his face. But he never got to the downed elk. A roar sounded through the forest, and two grizzly bears lumbered clumsily through the trees. The fur on their mangy backs bristled and their lips curled back in a snarl, showing long white fangs. And Kit's gun was empty. There was no time to reload it. Dropping his rifle, he scrambled hastily up a little aspen tree Even though he climbed as high as he could, his feet were just barely out of the bear's reach. He looked down at the angry Bruins, trying to swipe at him with their big paws. Kit tucked his legs under him the best he could. He watched the grizzlies rip some of the bark off the tree, pull at the roots, and tear at the branches taking an occasional wild swipe at him. Well, this can't go on much longer, Kit decided. He couldn't let this situation get the best of him, so he did some thinking. Even though a grizzly was the roughest, toughest animal around, 
he still had one very tender spot, his nose. Kip pulled out his hunting knife and whacked off a small tree branch. This was his new weapon. As soon as one bear nose got close enough, Kit was ready. Well, Mr. Grizzly, I can't say that I'm too sorry to do this to you. Whap! He smacked the bear in the nose. The bear fell down and grabbed his nose with his paws, howling in pain. The other bear came toward Kit. The new weapon hit its mark again. The other bear went down. Kit couldn't help laughing. My life may be in danger, but you two ruins are a funny sight to see. Another whole hour went by before the grizzlies finally decided that this battle wasn't worth the trouble. With snorts of pain and disgust, they lumbered back into the wilderness. After Kit was quite convinced that they were gone for good, he climbed down, making his way with stiff legs to the spot where the elk lay waiting. He discovered that it had been eaten by wolves. Hours after dark, Kit trudged back into camp. When he told his story, the other men laughed so hard that they cried. They didn't even mind that Kit had come back without any meat for supper. Kit laughed too. But I never have been so scared in all my life. Kit Carson, said a friend, you're a wonder. You're the only man I've ever known who could tussle with grizzly bears without a rifle and win 